scope of this film, for me, has been kind of the most extraordinary thing about it. Every day you come into work and you think it can't get any sort of bigger, it is. Anybody who's been on this ride is going to want to go see this movie because you're going to be part of this enormous adventure. This is my first Jerry Bruckheimer film, and uh, just from his reputation and the look of his movies and the size and the scope of everything you're doing, you, you want to make sure that you're not substandard. You want to bring it to the level that Jerry's used to and give it the biggest look that we can get and not limit the director and not limit the scope of the film. And they started with a lot of research about the Caribbean during that period and uh, the British sailors and soldiers and, and ships of that period. The film was written for three ships, mainly. We needed two military ships and one pirate ship. You know, we wanted the Dauntless to be like, you know, a hundred gun ship and there just isn't one. So we ended up building sections of it on a barge and using models. And, Similarly for the Black Pearl, which had to kind of be iconic in its own right. It was the ghost ship. It's got shredded sails. It's got all these qualities. So we had to construct that ship. We also rented a real ship and ended up sailing it all the way down here to the Caribbean. The Lady Washington uh, plays uh, the Interceptor, the fastest ship in the British fleet. Lady Washington is a uh, period reproduction of the first American vessel to make landfall on the Pacific Northwest coast back in 1789. We went in and repainted the entire boat, changed the inside, cut gun ports for the uh, cannons that we made for the boat. We made a ship's wheel changed the stern of it. We changed the color completely. The color combination matched the same Royal Navy ship that we did for the Dauntless. In LA, we did approximately 49 days of preparation to the vessel. That's when the majority of the set dressing happened, making the boat look the way the art department wanted it to look for this film. We're provided with all the blueprints from the art department, and they, they, uh, they're pretty uh, adamant about being period correct. We had three large pirate ships that we built from scratch. Two that were actually seaworthy that we built on top of um, steel barges and one that was built in the uh, in the dome over at um, Long Beach. The Black Pearl sails usually at night and it's in the full moonlight. We have uh, heavy fog so we did the fog test out in the open waters and we saw that that was going to be pretty difficult to shoot in the water so we decided to shoot it in the Spruce Goose Dome. And then we're building that exact boat again on top of the barge where it can be taken out into the open seas and, and then sailed. The Dauntless came from the, uh, it's, it's the British Royal Navy flagship. So we built that on a considerably larger barge because we had about 165 feet on deck and uh, built the front section, the stern, and the uh, bow. There are little fine bits of sculpture around the stern of the ship. The sails are all built to scale. Everything, it's all very carefully researched. They hadn't told me that I'd be steering the ship until, you know, basically, you know, camera was rolling. It was really fun because we just sort of sailing this huge ship on the open seas. I just looked over my shoulder one time and there's Johnny at the wheel with the hat and playing with the gold teeth, the whole look. And, and there's me just yanking on a rope going, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> We were on set several times, and we would just kind of giggle at how, you know, we get to do this. Naturally, Pirates of the Caribbean, everybody thinks that's the ride in Disneyland. We are wanting to bring that feel to the, to the show. And it's fun to go back and do this kind of stuff, because now it's like you're creating a, a ride that someone's going to take in the film.